Lesson 12 Sabbath Experiencing and Living the Character of God Sabbath Afternoon December 12 The Sabbath calls our thoughts to nature and brings us into communion with the Creator. In the song of the bird, the sighing of the trees, and the music of the sea, we still may hear His voice who talked with Adam and Eden in the cool of the day. And as we behold His power in nature, we find comfort, for the Word that created all things is that which speaks life to the soul. He who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 The Sabbath was not for Israel merely, but for the world. It had been made known to man in Eden, and like the other precepts of the Decalogue, it is of imperishable obligation. Of that law of which the fourth commandment forms a part, Christ declares, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So long as the heavens and the earth endure, the Sabbath will continue as a sign of the Creator's power. And when Eden shall bloom on earth again, God's holy rest day will be honored by all beneath the sun. From one Sabbath to another, the inhabitants of the glorified new earth shall go up to worship before me, saith the Lord. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 and Isaiah chapter 66 verse 23. The Desire of Ages, pages 281 to 283. God gave to men the memorial of His creative power that they might discern Him in the works of His hand. The Sabbath bids us behold in His created works the glory of the Creator, and it was because He desired us to do this that Jesus bound up His precious lessons with the beauty of natural things. On the holy rest day, above all other days, we should study the messages that God has written for us in nature. We should study the Savior's parables where He spoke them in the fields and groves, under the open sky, among the grass and flowers. As we come close to the heart of nature, Christ makes His presence real to us and speaks to our hearts of His peace and love. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 25 and 26. So long as the fact that He is our Creator continues to be a reason why we should worship Him, so long the Sabbath will continue as creation's sign and memorial. Had the Sabbath been universally kept, man's thoughts and affections would have been led to the Creator as the object of reverence and worship, and there would never have been an idolater, an atheist, or an infidel. The keeping of the Sabbath is a sign of loyalty to the true God, him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. It follows that the message which commands men to worship God and keep His commandments will especially call upon them to keep the fourth commandment. The Great Controversy, page 438 Sunday, December 13 Time to be astonished the great Jehovah had laid the foundations of the earth. He had dressed the whole world in the garb of beauty and had filled it with things useful to man. He had created all the wonders of the land and of the sea. In six days, the great work of creation had been accomplished, and God rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. God looked with satisfaction upon the work of His hands. All was perfect, worthy of its divine author, and He rested, not as one weary, but as well pleased with the fruits of His wisdom and goodness and the manifestations of His glory. After resting upon the seventh day, God sanctified it, or set it apart, as a day of rest for man. Following the example of the Creator, man was to rest upon this sacred day that as he should look upon the heavens and the earth, he might reflect upon God's great work of creation, and that as he should behold the evidences of God's wisdom and goodness, his heart might be filled with love and reverence for his Maker. In Eden, 
God set up the memorial of His work of creation in placing His blessing upon the seventh day. The Sabbath was committed to Adam, the father and representative of the whole human family. Its observance was to be an act of grateful acknowledgement on the part of all who should dwell upon the earth that God was their creator and their rightful sovereign, that they were the work of His hands and the subjects of His authority. Thus the institution was wholly commemorative and given to all mankind. There was nothing in it shadowy or of restricted application to any people. God saw that a Sabbath was essential for man, even in paradise. He needed to lay aside his own interests and pursuits for one day of the seven that he might more fully contemplate the works of God and meditate upon his power and goodness. He needed a Sabbath to remind him more vividly of God and to awaken gratitude because all that he enjoyed and possessed came from the beneficent hand of the Creator. Patriarchs and Prophets, pages 47 and 48 Great blessings are enfolded in the observance of the Sabbath, and God desires that the Sabbath day shall be to us a day of joy. There was joy at the institution of the Sabbath. God looked with satisfaction upon the work of His hands. All things that He had made, He pronounced very good. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Heaven and earth were filled with rejoicing. Though sin has entered the world to mar His perfect work, God still gives to us the Sabbath as a witness that one omnipotent, infinite in goodness and mercy, created all things. Our Heavenly Father desires through the observance of the Sabbath to preserve among men a knowledge of Himself. He desires that the Sabbath shall direct our minds to Him as the true and living God, and that through knowing Him we may have life and peace. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 349 Monday, December 14 Time for Rediscovery When the Lord delivered His people Israel from Egypt and committed to them His law, He taught them that by the observance of the Sabbath they were to be distinguished from idolaters. It was this that made the distinction between those who acknowledged the sovereignty of God and those who refused to accept Him as their Creator and King. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, the Lord said. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Exodus chapter 31, verses 17 and 16. As the Sabbath was the sign that distinguished Israel when they came out of Egypt to enter the earthly Canaan, so it is the sign that now distinguishes God's people as they come out from the world to enter the heavenly rest. The Sabbath is a sign of the relationship existing between God and His people, a sign that they honor His law. It distinguishes between His loyal subjects and transgressors. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, pages 349 and 350. At the time of the exodus from Egypt, the Sabbath institution was brought prominently before the people of God. While they were still in bondage, their taskmasters had attempted to force them to labor on the Sabbath by increasing the amount of work required each week. Again and again the conditions of labor had been made harder and more exacting. But the Israelites were delivered from bondage and brought to a place where they might observe, unmolested, all the precepts of Jehovah. At Sinai, the law was spoken, and a copy of it, on two tables of stone, written with the finger of God, was delivered to Moses. Exodus chapter 31, verse 18. And through nearly forty years of wandering, the Israelites were constantly reminded of God's appointed rest day by the withholding of the manna every seventh day and the miraculous preservation of the double portion that fell on the preparation day. Prophets and Kings, pages 180 and 181. Christ, during His earthly ministry, emphasized the binding claims of the Sabbath. In all His teaching, He showed reverence for the institution He Himself had given. In His days, the Sabbath had become so perverted that its observance reflected the character of selfish and arbitrary men rather than the character of God. 
Christ set aside the false teaching by which those who claimed to know God had misrepresented him. Although followed with merciless hostility by the rabbis, he did not even appear to conform to their requirements, but went straight forward keeping the Sabbath according to the law of God. In unmistakable language, he testified to his regard for the law of Jehovah. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, he said. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Prophets and Kings, page 183. Tuesday, December 15. Time for Learning Priorities. Christ would teach his disciples and his enemies that the service of God is first of all. The object of God's work in this world is the redemption of man. Therefore, that which is necessary to be done on the Sabbath in the accomplishment of this work is in accord with the Sabbath law. Jesus then crowned his argument by declaring himself the Lord of the Sabbath, one above all question and above all law. This infinite judge acquits the disciples of blame, appealing to the very statutes they are accused of violating. Jesus declared that in their blindness they had mistaken the object of the Sabbath. He said, If ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, ye would not have condemned the guiltless. Matthew chapter 12, verse 7. Their many heartless rites could not supply the lack of that truthful integrity and tender love which will ever characterize the true worshiper of God. The Desire of Ages, pages 285 and 286. The Sabbath is a golden clasp that unites God and His people. But the Sabbath command has been broken. God's holy day has been desecrated. The Sabbath has been torn from its place by the man of sin. And a common working day has been exalted in its stead. A breach has been made in the law, and this breach is to be repaired. The true Sabbath is to be exalted to its rightful position as God's rest day. In the 58th chapter of Isaiah is outlined the work which God's people are to do. They are to magnify the law and make it honorable, to build up the old waste places and to raise up the foundations of many generations. To those who do this work, God says, Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Verses 12 to 14. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, pages 351 and 352. We need to study, to meditate, and to pray. Then we shall have spiritual eyesight to discern the inner courts of the celestial temple. We shall catch the themes of song and thanksgiving of the heavenly choir round about the throne. God teaches that we should assemble in His house to cultivate the attributes of perfect love. This will fit the dwellers of earth for the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for all who love Him. There they will assemble in the sanctuary from Sabbath to Sabbath, from one new moon to another, to unite in loftiest strains of song, in praise and thanksgiving to Him who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb for ever and ever. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 368. Wednesday, December 16. Time for Finding Balance. As the Jews departed from God and failed to make the righteousness of Christ their own by faith, the Sabbath lost its significance to them. Satan was seeking to exalt himself and to draw men away from Christ, and he worked to pervert the Sabbath because it is the sign of the power of Christ. The Jewish leaders accomplished the will of Satan by surrounding God's rest day with burdensome requirements. 
In the days of Christ, the Sabbath had become so perverted that its observance reflected the character of selfish and arbitrary men rather than the character of the loving Heavenly Father. The rabbis virtually represented God as giving laws which it was impossible for men to obey. They led the people to look upon God as a tyrant and to think that the observance of the Sabbath, as he required it, made men hard-hearted and cruel. It was the work of Christ to clear away these misconceptions. Although the rabbis followed him with merciless hostility, he did not even appear to conform to their requirements, but went straight forward, keeping the Sabbath according to the law of God. The Desire of Ages, page 283. Those who have a living connection with God know that divinity works through humanity. Every soul that cooperates with God will do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. When he healed on the Sabbath day and was accused of breaking the law of God, he said to his accusers, Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. The Lord looks upon the creatures he has made with compassion. The Southern Work, page 57. We should jealously guard the edges of the Sabbath. Remember that every moment is consecrated, holy time. There is another work that should receive attention on the preparation day. On this day, all differences between brethren, whether in the family or in the church, should be put away. Let all bitterness and wrath and malice be expelled from the soul. In a humble spirit, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. James chapter 5, verse 16. Before the Sabbath begins, the mind as well as the body should be withdrawn from worldly business. God has set His Sabbath at the end of the six working days that men may stop and consider what they have gained during the week in preparation for the pure kingdom which admits no transgressor. We should, each Sabbath, reckon with our souls to see whether the week that has ended has brought spiritual gain or loss. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 356. Thursday, December 17. A time for community. The Sabbath is not intended to be a period of useless inactivity. The law forbids secular labor on the rest day of the Lord. The toil that gains a livelihood must cease. No labor for worldly pleasure or profit is lawful upon that day. But as God ceased his labor of creating and rested upon the Sabbath and blessed it, so man is to leave the occupations of his daily life and devote those sacred hours to healthful rest, to worship, and to holy deeds. The work of Christ in healing the sick was in perfect accord with the law. It honored the Sabbath. Labor to relieve the suffering was pronounced by our Savior a work of mercy and no violation of the Sabbath. The needs of suffering humanity are never to be neglected. The Savior, by His example, has shown us that it is right to relieve suffering on the Sabbath. My Life Today, page 231. The Spirit of God accompanied the words that were spoken and hearts were touched. The apostles appealed to Old Testament prophecies and his declaration that these had been fulfilled in the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth carried conviction to many a soul longing for the advent of the promised Messiah. And the speaker's words of assurance that the glad tidings of salvation were for Jew and Gentile alike brought hope and joy to those who had not been numbered among the children of Abraham according to the flesh. When the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. The congregation having finally broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes who had accepted the glad tidings borne to them that day followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 172 and 173. 
that all could see as I have seen the joy of those who have labored to the best of their ability in humility and meekness to help souls to come to Jesus. Oh, the joy that will be realized by the workers when the souls saved through their instrumentality express their gratitude in the mansions above. While Christ will be glorified as the only Redeemer, there will be an overflow of gratitude from the saved for the human instrumentalities employed in their salvation. Their gratitude to those who rescued them will find expression in words like these, I was pursuing a course that was a dishonor and an offense to my Redeemer. You manifested a love for my soul. You opened to me the Word of God. Your prayers, your tearful entreaties, your earnest interest arrested my attention. I thought that you must have the truth or you would not be so earnest for the salvation of others. I read the Word of God for myself and found that what you told me was the truth. I am saved, and I will praise my Redeemer for His matchless mercy and pardoning love. Reflecting Christ, page 236. For further reading, Selected Messages, The Sabbath, A Day of Service, Book 3, pages 258 and 259, and, In Heavenly Places, Remember the Sabbath Day, page 151.